RimWorld, Factorio, and Don't Starve are three of my favorite games ever made, and Oxygen Not Included feels like a weird love child that formed between the three of them. But at the same time, it bears no similarities whatsoever. It combines some of my favorite things from some of my favorite games, adds tons of unique twists and quirks, and somehow comes out with its own identity. I eat, sleep, and breathe productivity, efficiency, and the scientific method now, and my real life has devolved into utter chaos because I'm constantly worried about some dumbass named Jerry polluting my entire water supply because he can't hold his pee for more than 34 seconds. This is one of the best colony management games on the market, and you'll spend hours upon hours of your life trying to fine-tune your base to make it where you can possibly survive for more than 14 days without one of your duplicates ruining everything you worked so hard for. Oxygen Not Included was made by Clay, the developers of breakout hits like Starve, and it came out in 2017 to pretty damn high reviews. I actually hopped on the Oxygen Not Included wave when it first came out, and I thought, wow, this game is criminally underrated, and I just found my new favorite pastime and then I never played it again. It started out as something that was pretty under the radar, and it honestly didn't hit the spotlight like Don't Starve, even to this day. But yet, even without as much coverage and discussion as Don't Starve had in its early days, it somehow is rated as one of the 100 best overall games on Steam. Anywho, in this game you manage a colony of incompetent imbeciles called duplicants, and your goal is to try to teach them that submerging themselves neck deep in toxic waste isn't really a good idea, and that you know, maybe there's a more efficient way to do this. You spawn underground on an alien planet, and you're tasked with setting up your colony to where it can become a self-sustaining ecosystem. There are lots of things you have to focus on, but most important of all is oxygen. Breathing is the first of your many worries, and there are a lot of factors to think about when it comes to ensuring the longevity of your duplicate's lungs. You need to provide enough oxygen, but you also need to pay attention to the carbon dioxide being expelled, the toxic gas being released by your farms, and all of the other atmospheric elements that can easily turn your lovely oasis into a chamber of toxicity. Once you have that down, you are nowhere near done. You have to control these duplicates and help them produce enough food, avoid germs and sickness, set up their plumbing, electricity, research, and many other things to bring your colony on a path to excellence. All of these mechanics, tasks, and goals combine together perfectly to create a truly seamless experience that will draw you back to this game for hours on end. Oxygen Not Included is an awesome title, and if you enjoy colony management games or just want to try something new, it could be the perfect title for you. Another thing that can be perfect for you is the sponsor of today's video, Drake and Sang Online. If you like MMOs, then I really do think that this game could be for you. Drakensang Online is a free-to-play MMO with over 10 years of development history and millions of players. You play as one of four classes and adventure through Draconia to complete quests, fight monsters, and have fun by yourself or with friends. There are hundreds of hours of content in this game, tons of quests, and thousands of weapons, charms, and items to build all your characters and rule the world. You can hop into PvP battles with other players, fight bosses in dungeons, and complete awesome challenges. And best of all, their newest update, Realm of the Fire Lord, just added even more to the insane amount of content available in Drake and Sang Online. So download it today from the website or on Steam using my link in the description, and check out what the world of Draconia has to offer. Now back to the review. When you load up a new world in Oxygen Not Included, you get to choose from one of nine different starting worlds, which range from a simple, safe and balanced planet, to a lava-filled asteroid that has the average temperature of hell itself. Each of these planets provides different playstyles and are randomly generated, so even if you're like me and you're too scared to venture off the easy one, you can still have a unique layout every single time. You get to select three starting duplicates, and each of these duplicates have different skills, quirks, and traits. You can start out with strengths in either building, cooking, decorating, digging, doctoring, farming, machinery, or a few others, and you need to think strategically to build out your starting lineup for the best chance of success. Your goal is to obtain autonomy within your colony, and to make it where you don't have to do much to keep these idiots alive. You start out with a small box of rations and your good old American grit and patriotism, and you need to carve out a space in this underground environment to make it your own. But whoa whoa, calm down, don't be so ambitious. You aren't going to make much progress until you start researching. As you research new technologies, you can improve your base with automation, plumbing, filtration, and loads of other things that make life just a tiny bit easier. As you make progress, your duplicates and your problems will change based on previous actions. 
You're able to print out more duplicates as additional days pass, and they'll strain your resource supplies which will then create a chain reaction of problems. And because of this, it is infinitely replayable and no game will be like any other. There have been so many times when I made a stupid mistake or had oversight with my initial base planning, and I just started a new world because of it. Restarting in most games kinda sucks, like if you ever asked me to restart in Factorio, I would rather jump off a building. But for me, starting over in Oxygen Not Included gives me new opportunities to do things just a tiny bit better. Every single run will be just as fun as the previous, and you learn more and more about this game and make better decisions with every playthrough. And you better enjoy making decisions, my friend, because this game makes Elon's job at the Twitter HQ look like fucking Disneyland. As more and more days pass in the world, you are blessed with the ability to add more duplicates to your roster. But as you add more duplicates, you're going to need to ensure that you have more food for them. However, having more food requires more irrigation, which requires more electricity to pump it all in, which means more resources, and then you have to venture further into the world to get them. But wait a minute, what's that? Oh, that stuff makes you sick. So you need to research suits to survive out there, but researching suits takes a long time, and now you have 9 duplicates, and they're creating a lot of carbon dioxide. So you have to refine the carbon dioxide where they don't suffocate. But now your oxygen's running low, and you've used up your algae supply, which means that you need to produce it using water. But you're running out of water, so you need to clean up your polluted water, and so on and so forth into eternity. Sounds miserable, right? But it's not. The entire game is one big problem that needs constant solving, and it makes seeing the progress of your colony extremely rewarding. Little things that are a nuisance at first, like cleaning up all of the resources on the ground and putting them into containers, can be automated with robots which allows you to shift your focus to more pressing problems. All of these problems, however, change based on the decisions that you made earlier in the colony. For example, if you focused on obtaining a large water supply early on, you may have more energy to work on your resource production. But if you didn't plan for enough toilets in the early game, you'll have a much bigger problem on your hands later. Everything changes based on what you choose, and all of these micro decisions work alongside the infinite replayability that I mentioned earlier to provide not only a new experience, but a new story every single time. If you've played this game, I'm sure you've had funny experiences to share with others, so tell me your favorite Oxygen Not Included disaster in the comments below, and I'll pin my favorite. This story involves not only your base and the world, but the duplicates themselves. Stress is a big factor in this game, and if your duplicates become too stressed, they can go batshit crazy and ruin all of your progress. So you manage not only your base and your environment, but also your duplicate schedule, work-life balance, aesthetics, morale, and much more. These duplicates aren't just mindless robots, but actual people who have actual needs, and these needs need to be put on the list of things to focus on. So, there really is a lot to manage, but that's what keeps you invested into this game and makes it one of those titles that will suck you in for hours on end. There are lots of games where you have to manage a lot of different things and make different decisions as time goes on. But where Oxygen Not Included really shines is the complexity of all of the mechanics that are included in the game. This is one of those easy to learn, hard to master sort of games, and you can go 50 hours into it without even understanding half of the stuff you're doing. Like me. But when you do begin to understand everything, it takes the game to the next level. At first, you may struggle to figure out what to do with your excess carbon dioxide, but you'll eventually learn that the game has a complex gas dynamic system, where dense gases like carbon dioxide sink down towards the bottom of your base, and the pressure of the gases can actually cause them to seep into neighboring rooms. All of these different gases in your atmosphere have condensation points, and will turn into a liquid when at a specific temperature and these liquids will turn back into a gas when heated. The mechanic involving the gases alone is extremely complex, and while you can survive without really understanding how it works, once you begin to master it, you can do much more with the game. For example, this is a demonstration of the gas dynamics in this game that I found on Reddit. You may ask, what does it mean? Honestly, I have no fucking idea, but it probably shows you how complex these systems can be. Temperature management is another thing that you need to constantly be thinking about while trying to survive in oxygen not included. As you create more machinery, your base temperature will rise, and you'll have to keep it cool to keep your duplicates alive. If you're a smooth brain gamer like me, you'll just place around some ice and use some cooling technology and hope it works for the best. But if you really want to dive into the numbers and become an engineering major overnight, that's all you, buddy. You can do the conversions like you're Stephen Hawking and create the most scientifically efficient base in the history of bases. 
I don't even know what this shit means because I just graduated college with a marketing major, but I'm sure if you're trained in alien hieroglyphics, then you can probably work some magic here. You see, that's the beauty of Oxygen Not Included. You can play it at a surface level and have a great time for hundreds of hours. Or you could really dive into this shit and try to understand it at a fundamental molecular level. The developers did a great job with the whole easy to learn, hard to master thing, and this game will really work for everyone, regardless of how much mental energy you want to put into it. There are even countless examples online of players creating new systems by utilizing a mechanic differently than it was designed. The developers don't look at this as a thing that needs to be patched, but as a creative use of something that they've never intended. This game inspires creativity, and the developers enable it by allowing players to unleash their inner engineer. Sure, you can have a PhD in thermodynamics and play this game like you're unleashing the most advanced scientific discovery in the history of humanity, but you don't have to. And the reason why you can do that is because the game doesn't try too hard. The developers remember that this is supposed to be a game, and that people are supposed to have fun with games. The animations of all the duplicates and the friendly cartoon art style take some of the pressure away from the intensity of everything that you have to manage, and it brings you back down to earth for a little bit. The art style is extremely quirky, and there are tons of goofy little things that'll make you do one of those white suburban mom passing you in the grocery store smiles every once in a while. It loosens up the mood and keeps the game from feeling too overwhelming at times. I mean, take a look at the paintings that are on the wall. It's hard to take it too seriously when you have that thing looking at you all the time. But even when you're trying to take the game super seriously, you can't help but laugh with the stupid shit that happens sometimes. The sheer stupidity of some of these duplicates is honestly hilarious. They'll trap themselves underwater, submerge into toxic waste to grab some food from the ground, and countless other dumb actions that makes you feel like you're actually managing a colony of small toddlers. But these actions are usually somehow your fault because you didn't baby-proof your entire base. And for some odd reason, it's another thing that makes this game so awesome. In short, if you like colony management games like RimWorld and enjoy Don't Starve, Oxygen Not Included could be the perfect game for you. It has hundreds of hours of base gameplay, and they even have a DLC that's focused entirely around rocketry and exploration, if that's up your alley. But for me, I'm gonna stick to the basics and try to survive for long enough to not have a mental breakdown when Toddly pees in the water supply again. <laughs>